what's up everybody? This is Brian and welcome back to Saving Data in iOS video tutorial series. In this video tutorial, you'll be introduced to FMDB, otherwise known as the Flying Meat Database, which makes working with SQLite a breeze. SQLite wrappers are essentially a dime a dozen. You can find them everywhere, but probably the most popular is FMDB. Unfortunately, at the time of this writing, FMDB is still an Objective-C library. Thankfully, through the use of some bridging headers, we can integrate it into our code, which you'll see in just a moment. Whereas SQLite is a collection of weirdly named functions, FMB, FMDB has three principal objects that we will use. The first is the FM database, and this represents your data store, and it's what you call your queries on. The next is the FM result set, and this object encap encapsulates the result from a query. Finally, you have the FM database queue, and this is a thread safe way of making queries against the data store. If you're doing anything with threads, this is the class to use, but we won't be covering it in this tutorial. To see FMDB in action, let's just check out the demo. In the past video tutorial, I showed you how you could integrate SQLite into your app. And if you had watched that demo, you could see it's a little bit clunky. In this demo, I'll show you how you can use FMDB instead, and you can see how much easier it is to work with. Now, I'm using the app that we used in the last demo, and you can see it's using all SQLite. We're gonna convert this to use FMDB. The first thing you need to do is download FMDB from GitHub. I've already done this and I have extracted it to my desktop. I'm gonna open up my desktop and it's under FMDB master, under source, you can see a folder called FMDB. I'm going to drag this into my project. When I select the folder and open it, you can see we're dealing with Objective-C classes. To integrate this into Swift, I have to adjust my bridging header. I'm going to go up to SQLite bridging header and then change this to be fmdb.h. At this point, I can now start using FMDB. I'm gonna switch back to my view controller here, and things are pretty much the same in the beginning. We're using the same base URL, and we're using the same file name. And for the sake of clarity, I'm going to change this file name to Swift2, like so. Next, we need to create an FMDB database. And it's gonna be a type of FM database, and it takes a path. We can get a path from our DB URL, and then just call the method absolute string on that. Next, we simply call fmdb.open to open our database. We're going to use the same SQL statement to create our table. So we'll just copy this and we'll put it right here. To run this SQL statement, we're going to call execute update on fmdb. And this must be contained within a do catch block. To call this, we simply do try fmdb execute update. And then we pass in our SQL statement and we're not passing in any values, so that will be nil. Next, we wanna insert a row into our new table. So I'll copy this insert statement here and we'll put this underneath the SQL statement. To run this, we simply call fmdb execute update and we'll put in our insert statement like so. Now to select rows from the table, we'll copy our select statement. And I'm gonna create a new variable called fm result. And this is a type of fm result set object. And to query our database, we simply call it fmdb, and then we call execute query. I'm simply going to pass in my select SQL, and with parameter dictionary, I'll just provide nil. Now I can iterate through my result set by simply calling fm result and then next. At this point, I can get my columns. And to get them on my fm result set object, I can call int for column, and this will get an integer. If you are looking for other types, there, there is method specifically for those types. What's nice about this is that it does the cast for us. For my title, I'm going to use string for column, and I'll just simply pass in my column name, like so. I'll do the same for the author and date. 
And now we can print them out. And finally, we can delete all this SQLite code. And I'm going to build and run. And as you can see, we did the same thing that we did in the past video tutorial, but our code is much more concise and easier to read. That's it for this video tutorial, but as always, we like to leave off with a challenge. In your challenge, you'll save some objects to SQLite and then retrieve them back much like using NS coding pro protocol, but you're gonna be doing everything using FMDB. For more information, please see the challenge document. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.